on the Dow at 4 o'clock on Wall Street yesterday. Joining me right now is Advisor Investments Chief Investment Officer Jim Lowell, also joining the conversation all morning long this morning. Fox Business' Dagan McDowell and columnist for The Hill and Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Great to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Jim, kicking things off with you. Investors have faced a roller coaster few weeks, uh, but you think global markets are starting to show some signs of resiliency. Tell me about the wild cards out there and what will uh, you be looking for in terms of drivers for this market? Good morning, Maria. Yeah, uh, look, uh, wild cards are today on the table, Russia and Ukraine, clearly China and Evergrande, $300 billion default coming down into their marketplace. Well, it doesn't seem to be bothering their markets all that much. Here at home, of course, uh, and elsewhere, the virus variants, uh, one suspects we'll see more surges of fear, more surges of relief. But underneath all of those real and imagined risks is uh, our fundamentals that continue to build the case for rebounding. That is, so long as and unless and until uh, the government stop flooding uh, their respective economies with stimulus uh, money and other forms of aid. So we're reasonably optimistic on a going forward basis that uh, despite the fact that we think we will still be uh, in a roller coaster ride, that uh, there are gains to be had at the end of uh, a week, if not the end of a day. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned all the stimulus. We are right now in the throes of this negotiation in Washington where yeah, lawmakers believe that they want more money thrown at the economy. Uh, at this point, it doesn't look like the president's spending package will get through uh, because Joe Manchin and Christian Sinema are holding the line on the Democrat side. But what are your thoughts? Should we continue to see more spending? I mean, this is a top concern for Americans. We've got a new Wall Street Journal poll to show everybody this morning, 56% of registered voters say that the cost of living is rising and it is creating financial strain for their family. When asked about the main cause of inflation, 39% said that the Biden administration policies are to blame. 24% says it's the supply chain. The CEOs of Wayfair, Intel, Accenture all warned yesterday that long-term fixes caused by the supply chain crunch could drag on. The head of Intel, in fact, said that he's expecting the problems to continue into 2023, Jim. Your thoughts about all of these uh, sort of headwinds coming at this market well no question it's a it's a concern but it's hard to calculate maria i mean i don't have a supercomputer in my office so i don't know what happens to an economy when you continue to pump trillions and trillions of dollars into it but we have seen the obvious and real world manifestation in inflationary prices on everything that we need from fuel to food food to home prices which continue to be in a bubble of their own um, and sooner or later, one, one assumes that just spending wildly ends badly. That said, without the massive spending support of last year, our economy would likely be in rougher shape today. What that means uh, for 2022, 2023, uh, maybe even further down the road, when sooner or later the piper has to be paid, uh, we'll have to manage through that uh, potential debacle when it comes. But here and now, all of that support continues to create a safety net uh, underneath the marketplace for investors. For the have-nots, it gets worse. For the haves, it continues to be a fairly good environment. So how do you want to uh, navigate all of this then, Jim? I mean, you mentioned Evergrande earlier, China's uh, Evergrande uh, real estate group shares hitting a record low after a missed debt payment deadline this week. It's put the developer at risk of being the country's largest default. Another Chinese developer, Kaiza, also saw its shares halted in Hong Kong after it, too, missed a deadline um, in terms of an offshore debt deadline yesterday, Jim. How does this impact the U.S.? So the real question, Maria, is whether or not Evergrande is a Lehman Brothers event for the Chinese economy, for the global economy. So far, the markets are clearly saying that, that they don't think it is, despite the fact that it is a $300 billion default in the making and has ripple effects through its commercial real estate industry. Look, China has uh, had go cities going back you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, their real estate bubble is uh, absolutely gigantic. Uh, our real estate bubble was gigantic. Japan's real estate bubble was gigantic before ours. Japan's bubble ended badly. Our bubble ended badly. China's may too. But even, uh, even as the news is breaking that China is going to let Evergrande default, uh, the markets, Chinese markets are up uh, today. So they are 
I think yeah. thinking that they can bull their way through this. And, and, and in terms of how you're allocating capital right now, Jim, what are you doing into 2022? We really like uh, battleship balance sheet, blue chip growth in value, multi U.S. multinationals. Uh, we also think there's some opportunity in the small mid cap value space here domestically, uh, but also globally where research and analysis tend to trail. Uh, we don't think it's a bad idea to have a little bit of cash uh, for both defense and opportunity. On the income side of the fence, it remains a conundrum, really the most difficult income market. Uh, this year will turn into uh, an even more difficult uh, income market, we think, in 2022. So we're taking a very diversified approach, uh, pretty much only most uh, income instruments under the sun, trying to diversify away uh, the risk and use uh, bonds in our portfolios as buffers and bolsters for what we suspect will be increased volatility on a going forward basis. Yeah, we're just looking at the 10-year uh, yield down uh, this morning, pulling back uh, about uh, four basis points or so. Jim, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Jim thank Lowell you. joining us uh, on all of that. We'll see you soon, Jim. Thank you. We are just getting started this morning. We've got a big show coming up. We are looking at another.